Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the chancellor. I declare that the 580th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is David Farrar and I am the Provost and Vice President Academic of McMaster University. <clears throat> this afternoon I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremonies and of welcoming you all to this convocation ceremony. I would like to start by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and the Haudenosaunee nations within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge a number of notable leaders joining me on stage today. Dr. Suzanne Lavarge, our Chancellor. Dr. Patrick Dean. Ms. Mary Williams. Dr. Paul O'Byrne. Mr. Paul Armstrong. Uh, Dr. James Humphreys. And Associate Vice Presidents and Associate and Assistant Deans. McMaster, Mohawk, and Conestoga faculty members, and honored guests. Before we start the formal program, may I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic devices that may ring or beep or speak to you during the ceremony. I would now like to call upon our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, to make her welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, family, friends, colleagues, and faculty from McMaster University, Mohawk College, and Conestoga College, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases, have had a key role in you being here today. You've achieved a great deal 
to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony. I would now like to welcome Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor to the podium, who will be presenting our honorary degree recipient. Chancellor Labarge, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Avis Favreau. As the medical specialist at CTV National News, Avis Favreau is Canada's longest serving television medical health correspondent and her ability to offer insight into our country's healthcare system and provide information to both the people who use that system and the people who set policy for it has helped raise the bar for the conversation around one of our nation's fundamental public services. After graduating from Western University with an undergraduate degree in history and a master's degree in journalism, Ms. Favreau began working for Global Television Network as a general assignment and business reporter, but soon became the network's medical correspondent. During her decade in that role, she earned the Dan MacArthur Network Award for Distinction in Investigative Journalism from the Radio Television Digital News Association for her reporting on the neonatal crisis. Ms. Favreau joined CTV National News in 1992 and has since reported on a full range of subjects from medical errors to experimental treatments for multiple sclerosis and has been a leader in identifying and reporting on serious issues including her recent investigation of the predatory publishers of illegitimate medical journals. She has earned 13 Gemini Award nominations and captured that honor in 1997. Her other accolades include receiving the Dan MacArthur Award for her 1993 story, Seniors Sex, and 1998 Canadian Association of Journalists Investigative Award for Whistleblower Doctor. She earned the International Health and Medical Media Award for her story on ethics in medical research and the Bronze World Medal for Cancer Doctors at the New York Festivals. The RTDNA recognized Ms. Favreau in 2012 for her W5 feature report on double amputee Spencer West climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. The same organization honored her with the 2008 David Rogers Award for her short feature, Carly's Story, and the Canadian Medical Association and Canadian Nurses Association Annual Media Awards recognized Ms. Favreau in 2009 for two stories, BPA in Cannes, and her W5 feature on depression. In 2005, Ms. Favreau received the gold medal from the New York Film and TV Festival for her documentary on experimental bone marrow treatment for multiple sclerosis. Three times, she has received the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario Award for healthcare reporting. In 2010, for, for blood cells from skin, in 2012 for Seniors Poverty Lottery, and in 2013 for A City's Pain. The 2010 award was the result of her coverage of breakthroughs achieved by the McMaster Stem Cell and Cancer Research Institute. For her overall work in news and specifically medical reporting, Ms. Favreau was named an honorary member of the Federation of Medical Women in 2011 and received the Bronze World Medal for Best News Correspondent at the 1999 New York Festivals. Chancellor Labarge, it is a privilege to present Avis Favreau to you so that you may recognize her contributions to journalism and healthcare in Canada by conferring upon her the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Avis Favreau, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you 
the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations. And we'll get you to sign over here. I would like to now ask Dr. Favreau to give the convocation address. Madam Chancellor, President Dean, honored guests, graduates, family and friends, greetings to you on this magnificent and joyous day. And forgive me if I'm a bit emotional, but people call me doctor at work and it's a joke, but now it's real. <laughs> The organizers have given me five to seven minutes, just like the preacher at the royal wedding. So I'll let you know I'll be speaking for 15 minutes. <laughs> just kidding. I am deeply, deeply honored to be sharing this event with you all, along with my husband, Jim, my family, my friends, my very smart and talented colleague and work spouse, Elizabeth St. Philip, for, with whom I've worked for 17 years, and she puts up with me, and my wonderful and vivacious 84-year-old mother, Lydia, who's here from London, Ontario. When I received the email telling me that I was receiving this very unexpected honor from McMaster, I was taken aback. I was profoundly thankful to the people who put my name forward. Thank you, whoever you are. And the next thing I did, I'll admit, was I walked into an edit suite at the CTV newsroom for a moment of privacy and I shed a tear. Because the first person who jumped into my mind and my heart was my dad, who passed away seven years ago. His name was Giuseppe, Joe Favreau. He arrived in Canada in 1955, all shiny and bright, with a beautifully coiffed head of hair, I think he looks like Elvis Presley. And it, he landed in London, Ontario with one suitcase and $15. Among his possessions was a book on how to pronounce English words and the first he used to order dinner. Cheese, please. That was his first meal. But among his dreams as a new Canadian was to go to university, to become an architect, to get a higher education, and a few years after he arrived, he applied, and he was rejected. And the reason why? He had an accent. Imagine that. His dream was crushed. But that didn't stop him. While raising a family of three and working in construction, he studied by correspondence, and he earned a drafting degree, becoming a successful contractor. But his story and that lingering regret made it clear to me that a higher education was something to be desired, to be attained, and to be held. And that's partly what sent me to university for my education. And I believe that my dad is very proud of all the graduating students here today. And on his behalf, I applaud you. When I entered university, I had two goals, find something I would be good at and help people. I chose journalism. But when I entered the workforce, I was assigned to cover crimes, potholes, book bannings, tax scams. The turning point came one day when I was covering a gruesome double murder uh, suicide. And as I watched the police carry out the bodies one by one, it was a low moment. I said, this is not helping anyone. The low moment wasn't an ending, but a beginning. It compelled me to find a new direction in health journalism, focusing on stories that really matter to people. When people are asked the top 10 things for a fulfilling life, guess what's number one? Health. Far above politics and finance, it's health. And that's what we share in common, graduates. You want to help people. You've chosen a profession of nursing to ease pain, to help in healing, to comfort and support. 40% of Canadians feel their job really has no purpose, but nursing is a profession with deep purpose. 
you will witness deaths. You will bear witness to suffering, to births, to joys, all aspects of the human condition. And nurses, I believe, have such an important role. Their value must be raised up in our society because without nurses, there is no quality health care. Hospitals without nurses are hotels. We also likely share something else, graduates. We've probably learned about everything that can go wrong with the human body, and we're all probably slightly hypochondriacs. Ah, it's true. Over the years, I have self-diagnosed with atrial fibrillation, diabetes, scleroderma, and at times a myocardial infarction while on a deadline. Fortunately, I was wrong. But now, after several years of studying the science of nursing, you're about to join a vast workforce and the reality of medicine in Canada, which is governed by budgets and politics and political campaigns. But remember, healthcare is probably the most important thing to Canadians. Its universality defines us. We like to hold it up in shiny comparison with the United States. It's also a system that is very much under stress, the pressure to do more with less. So you need to prepare for a career steeped in constant change. How do you do that? As I prepared for the ceremonies today, I thought back to my own university graduation, and I don't remember who spoke. I haven't the foggiest what they said. And I thought, how can I leave these graduates with some simple words that will stick with them, that maybe they will recall at a moment of need as guidance? And here goes. Your first word is cheese. Cheese as in cheddar, Swiss, Parmesan, my, first, my dad's first real meal in Canada. Cheese is a symbol for what you want, your career. It comes from a book called Who Moved My Cheese by Dr. Spencer Johnson. And as an aside, I have a copy of the book for the first graduate who shakes my hand after the ceremony. Mice like cheese. You might like a good hospital job, a career in public health, a promotion, recognition. You get it, you savor it, but beware, your cheese will get moved. My husband Jim and I paid our boys to read the book because of its message, resilience. Your cheese will get moved. You may be hired, laid off, work part-time. Your job description may change. But if you grow to anticipate that your cheese will be moved, and you prepare for it, and you adapt quickly, the faster you'll find new cheese. A rigid mind is a recipe for problems. Flexibility in the workforce is paramount, and it will keep you sane in a world of medicine that is constantly changing. So graduates, keep your eye on the cheese. And the second word I'd like you to remember is kindness. Medicine is more and pills and bandages. Healing comes with kindness. I canvassed two nurses at either end of the spectrum, Sandy, a senior veteran nurse, and Kayleen Nichols, who graduated from Mac, and both offered the same message, kindness. Know that you have the power to make people's lives better if just for a few hours. A few years back, I was a patient right here in Hamilton, I don't remember the names of the nurses or their faces. I want to forget the food. But I do remember the kindness of one nurse who, despite being understaffed, helped me get out of bed without ripping my stitches, and the compassion she spoke with me when I couldn't sleep because the woman beside me was snoring. No pills required. She made me feel better just with kindness. Sandy tells me about an elderly man on a ward. She had come on shift and he was yelling in Italian. Her colleagues said, no, we can't figure out what he's saying, so they assumed he had dementia. But Sandy went into the room, could not figure out what he said. It sounded like sapast, Bewildered, Sandy went the extra step. She put a friend on the phone who spoke Italian and said, what kind of pasta does he want? And she says, he doesn't want pasta. He's constipated and he's in agony. He wants a suppository. 
So Sandy got one, cleaned, it, cleaned him up. It worked. The family arrived. She saw them having an animated discussion. And she said, is everything OK? And her, the son said, oh, yes. My father said he has never seen such a beautiful, kind nurse like you. Wow. What better payoff? Simple, beautiful, kindness, kindness. You will be able to give that gift many times over. It won't be easy. You will be facing frontline medicine with all its anxious, fearful, and sometimes very difficult patients. So I offer you these words of advice from the veterans of the field. Treat everyone like they're your family. Listen to the patients. Pick up cues. Are they alone? Are they afraid? Don't fall into the trap, that's not my patient. That's not my job description. Go beyond what you're asked to do. People don't come out of textbooks. Get comfortable with the unusual. Anticipate. Look for potential outcomes. Ask yourself, will I regret not checking out X? Don't be afraid to ask questions. Learn to admit mistakes. And remember, you are the eyes and the ears and the voice of your patients. And don't forget about cheese and kindness, the sandwich for your rewarding career. Your life is about to change. You will realize you are a professional nurse when everyone comes to you asking for a diagnosis. When you wash your hands in a public restroom and close the taps with your elbows. And whenever anyone asks for a pen, you'll have an abundance. And apparently, nurses steal them from the doctors. In conclusion, a reflection on the life in nursing by Sheila Davis. Life is not always glamorous as a nurse. It can be exhausting, thankless, stressful, frustrating, and sad. It takes courage to be a nurse, but not necessarily the courage that we hear in award ceremonies or the news. Courage does not always roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I'll try again tomorrow. You are the profession that will lighten the burdens of the others. And remember, yours are the hands that will save lives. Thank you all. Thank you, Dad. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you very much, Dr. Favreau, for those wonderful words, both words of wisdom given with a touch of levity, which will probably make them far more rememberable than, than many of the words you hear from us, but also for reminding us that how broad is the recognition of value of education. And so I want to thank you again, and it's a clear indication of how delighted and why we should be delighted that Dr. Favreau has now joined us as part of the McMaster community. Thank you again. Dr. Patrick Dean will now come forward to present the graduates to our chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduates please stand? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them. And I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduate of the degree Master of Science, Nicole Lynn Day. Carolyn Ann Hill. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Rachel Ann Abaza. Ashani Abhi Singh. Ashani Abhi Singh. Zara Abidi. Enos Omar Abu Fada. Kasha Adams. Adiyinka Mariam Adiyemi. <laughs> Natalia Nicole Aksamit. Kazi Nusrat Akhtar. Amina Alizi. Jimoki Oyendolamala Alafe. Hannah Ashley Alconel. Alisa Claire Allen. Nicole Ament. Christina Connie Amore. Renika Ryan Andal. Trevor Angst. Kristen Janelle Antonides. Daniel Antwi. Mohammed Sakib Anwar. Tuyu Joy Ariri. Rachel Amanius. Christina Margaret Armstrong. Kalista Dawn Arnold. Catherine Jane Asser. Melissa Grace Augule. Amy Backrow. Andrea Bakai. Crystal May Barron. Kyla Joanne Batigalia. Paige Bear. Sabrina Lynn Beecham. Elena Beluzzi. Alicia Mina Benavis. Melissa Benavis. Megan Marie Benson. Anne Millie Beverly Foster. Alison Grace Beerling. Noelle Bish. Trevor Black. Amanda Bodo. 
Sydney Alexandra Bookerstein. Jennifer Pauline Burma. Joel Mark Bond. Jennifer Borden. Valerie Boas. Rachel Bowden. Glennis Boyce. Melanie June Boiter. Jacqueline Bradshaw. Vera D. Brandau. Kevin Tyler Brandt. Selena Braund. Nicolina Brida. Jennifer Rubel Brewster. Rebecca Sharon Brink. Sydney Marie Broad. Megan Broadhagen. Oliver Ray Brown. Sarah Brubacher. Shirley Brubacher. Caitlin Bridges. Jordan Marjorie Bridges. Rebecca Buck. Emilia Bukowiec. Samantha Caitlin Burgers. Lucinda Joy Birklin. Naila Fatima Busawan. Caitlin Michelle Cabral. Natasha Callahan. Melissa Chantal Caruso. Miley Kam Cha. Heather M. Chamberlain. Kristen Rachel Chambers. Kristen Charbonneau. Madeline Chard. Stephanie Chari Sanchez. Elsa Chen. Wu Lan Chen. Yun Wen Chen. Natalie Ho Man Cheng. Jenny Shu Ha Chong. Lois Tiu Chu. Ashley Caitlin Clark. Anne Marie Clayton. Paige Bridget Klo. Nadia Colacitti. Sabrina Condello. Shannon Conte. Cassandra Kotic. Rana Rebecca Couchman. Trinda Crawford. Ashley Cressman. Jolene May Cristobal. Christina Lynn Criticos. Hannah Michelle Cross. Priscilla Suju. Lorelai Diane Curry. Megan Angela Curtis. 
Shane Dale. Stephanie Joanne Daly. Danielle Jenna Dam. Linda Dam. Joe Dang. Whitley Willa Danica. Cheryl Das. Deanna Nicole DeSantis. Madeline Marie Dielstra. Grace Mariam Dahan. Nina Del Junco. Christina Elizabeth Denny. Marley Denome. Jennifer Rose Dent. Sandeep Kaur Deo. Christine Dawn Di Napoli Di Pasquale. Aidan Demenian. Caitlin De Vries. Alexandra Di Diomede. Elizabeth Rose Di Giacomo. Babeth Patricia Diazza Dong Epse Kanuo. Lara Megan Dobbins. Brianna Dolderman. Carly Dolderman. Erica Joy Doratan. Olivia Anna Doroshinsky. Victoria Drake. Sarah Alexandra Duckworth. Caroline Magdalene Dujinsky. Bridget Duffy. Sonia Penner Dyke. Tanya Ava Dykstra. Sarah Jane Dishuk. Malika Ibrahim. Sarah El Samak. Brianna Elizabeth Elliott. Maureen Rose Claire Elliston. Joshua Hendrick Enslin. Madison Alexandra Atsinian. Jacqueline Estrada. Laura Ann Fable. Carmen Fang. Sarah Lynn Funisan. Holly Fisher. Francis Fletcher. Brianne Flowers. Brittany Flowers. Sarah Jane Zara Fondavilla. Joanna Nicole Freeman. Nicole Lee Funk. Charlotte Fuhrbacher. Carla Alexandra Galdames. Marley Galina. Shannon Heather George. Sarah Gibson. Caitlin Elizabeth Glassford. Kylie Brianne Glenn. 
Tiana Golic. Michelle Good. Emily Ann Nicole Goodman. Michelle Laurie Gordon. Patrick Gormley. Jacqueline Graham. Taylor Graves. Alexa Grunensteger. Mary Allison Hrut. Javier Guaja. Joel D. Gutierrez. Louisa Haynes. Sarah Patricia Hall. Christina Ann Halloran. Hadil Hamoud. Huda Hassan. Claire Marie Hatzelega. Nicole Hazel. Gabrielle Madeleine June Healy. Laura Nicole Hag. Alison Henniger. Jessica Kimberly Joan Hill. Jacqueline Hinchberger. Alisa Marlene Hirtle. Jessica Grace Ho. Kailana Rose Hopkins. Kylie Hopkins. Rhiannon D. Hopkins. Samantha Horvat. Sharon Bethany House. Gillian Howden. Miriam Howe. Karen Xiao. Jing Hu. Richard Huang. Wei Xuan Huang. Sarah Huddle. Nancy Toyet Hung. Mei Hung. Paula Christelle Delphin. Ashley Michelle Jackson. Michelle Jackson. Gabriela Yasai. Cindy Jung. Jessica Jones. Stephanie Ann Jones. Gabriela Yosifova. Ketsia Fula Kabamba. Glory Kagwiria. Erica Hansel Kang. Jewel Kathleen Maria Karkus. Sarosh Karma. Kelsey Elizabeth Kaufhold. Amandeep Kaur. Bonnie Kiovilovong. 
Caitlin Kerr. Melody Shabnab Kevani. Michelle Hu. Joy Hayung Kim. Lauren Christine Kinnear. Sarah N. Kitma. Brittany Klein. Amy Elizabeth Cable. Nicole Elizabeth Grace Kufutz. Annalise Kohler. Adisoje Adibowale Komolafe. Catherine Marie Ku. Melissa Joan Coyman. Jasmine Cornelson. Faith Caldice. Courtney Victoria Krajewski. Nicole Melissa Kunajic. Lou Jane Ktelia. Caitlin May Kuiper. Isabel Kuhn. Yoon B. Kwon. Lisa La. Caitlin Nicole Labros. Jennifer Ann Lackner. Cheska Lace Barameda Lagon. Emily Marisa Laman. Emily Elizabeth Lammers. Marcy Landman. Alison Anne Marie Langendon. Shelby Brianne Lansdell. Sophie Lapierre Green. Fionn Lam. Mackenzie Lawler. Kim Lee. Jessica Lee Savory. Christine Lee. Isla Victoria Lagu. Ryan Lapine. Jenna Levinson. Joseph Roman Lim. Boy Yi Lin. Chantel Sharin Lindo. Sienna Lindsay. Seth Lippert. Adam Lloyd Davis. Lauren Marie Locko. Melanie Diana Lodenque. Lorraine Lopez Guerrero. Melanie Lucas. Cherie Luke. Jamie Lynch. Alexandra Teresa McDonald. Haley Machuk. Angela Artel McCullis. Catherine Page McGill. Carol Geraldine Mahecha Forero. 
Angela Malic. Nancy Manibong. Chelsea Mann. Manpreet. Princess Maranan. Brian Mar Marazzo. Jenna Markusen. Alexander Maretsky. Jade Marie Matalera. Tara Joy Healy Martin. Alex Masati. Rebecca Matahin. Erin Francis Mawini. Michael Meyer. Rachel Caroline Mc McConnell. Taylor Salkin McKay. Abigail Justin McLaughlin. Riley Mc McMahon. Melissa Erin McMaster. Jared Scott Miller. Sandra Mina. Marina Miskic. Ad Adrienne Louise Mitsuki. Caitlin May Moggy. Isaac Mohammed. Sheila Montenegro. Kristen Marie Moore. Jennifer Ann Morris. Megan Samantha Morris. Althea Ann Morrison. Alana Amy Morton. Caitlin Joy Cindy Morton. Jessica Mosley. Rachel Maria Moss. Nadine Mutatasem. Madison Murdoch. Alana Michelle Mustard. Onai Olivia Muvezewa. Nick Nates. Chloe Navarro. Olivia Nellis. Justine Lynn Neptune Wright. Henry Nguyen. Samima Niazi. Rebecca Nielsen. Sarah Lorraine Nienhis. Jennifer Norris. Bailey Noseworthy. Sherry Ann O'Connor. Thomas Lloyd O'Hanley. Brittany Tamara O'Hearn. Jordan Kamia Oda. Eliezer Oka. Miriam Manami Okuda Refuse. 
Natasha Megan Oliveira. Eniola Rita Onagoro Uwa. Ayu Mepose Angie Laolua Osho. Gina Srenit Pa. Claudine Ines D. Paugurian. Tessa Palmer. Jonalyn Panganibam. Samantha Papagiannis. Tatiana Paparelli. Uncio Park. Ju Heye Park. Justneet Parsi. Yasmina Pataka. Nirali Patel. Shivani Patel. Rebecca Marie, M Rebecca Mary Piccinin. Catherine Marina Place. Braden Playford. Michaela Pletch. Angela Poe. Erica Renee Paul. Alexis Anna Polychronis. Julia Pollard. Megan Popper. Jessica Prattis. Melanie Heather Precious. Annie Prout. Carla Estefani Pumachagua Nechiosup. Riza Rabara. Vanessa Joy Rabin. Patricia Radu. Alisa Ragnanan. Dawn Marie Rajewski. Selena Ingrid Raud. Shailin Tracy Riemann. Avery Rini. Vanessa Redmond. Josephine Jane Redshaw. Caitlin Reed. Kasara Alice Monique Remia. Samantha Evelyn Ricciardi. Robin Ember Richter. Sanya Ristich. Heather Robinson. Alisa Michelle Rochelot. Nicole Rogers. Sarah Rowling. Jessica Faith Roppelt. Laura Roth. Laura Rolston. Adrienne Whitney Rouse. Rachel Elizabeth Joan Rowney. Taylor Broman Roy. Rachel Russell. Christina Diana Russo. 
Saley Samimi. Shira Mai Santos. Michaela Sayabu. Harjot Kaur Saroya. Mira Maroon Saya. Alexandria Saya. Caroline Schmidt. Gillian Shoup. Jennifer Francis Schroeder. Alexander Schioni. Alexa Christine Scott. Azar Segi Elherd. Aiswara Sanal Selina. Ahmed Shafiq. Minoli Sanjay Shah. Jiang Xiao. Muna Sheikh. Alisa Shouldais. Alisa Moore Silvestri. Julia Irene Simpson. Sabrina Singh. Brian Scott Smith. Elizabeth Maria Smith. Heather Smith. Megan Smith. Mirko Smolovic. Mary Beth Smolton. Molly Summers. Diraj Kaur Soor. Sophie Claire St. Pierre. Madeline Steidelha. Rachel Elizabeth Stewart. Zandra Marie Star Strnad. Hilary Sudar. Julia Kathleen Swan. Paulina Sheremeta. Alana Nicole Tate. Jessica Tang. Anna Karina Taurinch. Nicholas Jordan Turk. Grace Maria Terry. Emily Noel Thompson. Jason Tony. Courtney Tory. Anna Maria Tratnik. Christine Travassos. Claudia Chaska. Michelle Turner. Margaret Hope Uzbalis. Sarah Victoria Valvasori. Michaela Grace Van Der Poel. Jody Diana Van Egmont. Rachel Van Rissel. Jenalyn Van den Heuvel. Lindsay Hope Van der Schaaf. 
Lisa J. Van der Wees. Lee Wang. Emma Mary Margaret Volpati. May Vong. Felicia Noel Wagla. Christine Lee Wakefield. Chenna Wang. Matthew James Vasilechko. Janelle Weber. Nicole Wine. Rose Weiser. Courtney Larissa Westbrook. Elizabeth Marie Whittington. Amanda Jessica Widdison. Lorelai Ruth Weeb. Joshua James Villam. Alexis Williams. Teresa Wilson. Jennifer Julia Vishniowski. Samantha Erin Wittenberg. Tirza Walters. Madeline Woods. Rebecca Wozniak. Eva Zhu. Andrea Moisha Ye Yearwood. Christine Lena Ye. Melissa Christina Young. Anna Catherine Zanstra. Arden Fabroa Zara. Vivian Chan Jang. Minga Zhao. Emily Ann Zimmerink. Madeline Zust. Catherine Churavsky. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce Ms. Lois Chu, a graduate of the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing, who will be delivering the valedictory address. You're in nursing, right? Oh, perfect. Can you tell me what this rash on my back is? This is an encounter that many of us may have experienced, yet probably still don't have an answer to. Good afternoon, Chancellor Labarge, President Dean, Provost, distinguished faculty, family, friends, and graduates. My name is Lois Chu, and I am honored and humbled to be giving the valedictory address for this year's nursing convocation ceremony. As I stand before you, I see the many parts that have been instrumental to today's success preparing us for our journey ahead. Let me explain this to you with an analogy of a house. Our families and loved ones, you are the framework of our house, providing a firm foundation that has helped us become who we are today. Thank you for listening to our vivid nursing stories while holding down your dinner. Some of those could be pretty disgusting, I know. Sorry, mom and dad. But in all seriousness, thank you for your unwavering love and support throughout these past few years. This accomplishment of earning a BSCN degree is as much yours as it is ours. 
Our friends, you are the frames and walls. Besides, there's nothing that sparks a friendship faster than someone agreeing to help you change an adult diaper during a clinical shift. Knowing that someone else knows how you're feeling is priceless, especially after experiencing the glorious smell of C. diff for the very first time. Oh. Thank you to our friends who have stuck by our sides through the best, the worst, and the ugly crying. The nursing faculty and support staff, you're the plumbing, mechanical, and electrical elements to this house. Your efforts were an essential part towards helping us achieve this milestone. Thank you for supporting us and challenging us to always reflect and reflect and reflect. Your wealth of knowledge and passion for the profession of nursing has truly been inspiring. Lastly, the McMaster community is the roof where I've learned that it promotes camaraderie and lifelong friendships. For some of us, we felt a connection from the first moment we arrived on campus when we were greeted by the Welcome Week reps who helped us move into our residence, literally putting roofs over our heads. For others, deep-rooted friendships were formed through our first clinical groups. Quickly, McMaster began to feel like home for many of us. Throughout our time at McMaster, we've learned many lessons. Here are two in particular that I wanted to highlight. First, we learned to overcome adversity. For some of us, that meant figuring out how to cook something other than craft dinner, do our own laundry, and meet new friends while navigating university for the first time. Some had to figure out how to work until 1 in the morning and still show up for clinical at 7 a.m. the same day. For others, it was learning to balance the demands of parenthood along with the demands of school. For some of us, the challenge was being away from everything that was familiar to you, family, friends, and homeland. On the contrary for others, the challenge was living at home with your parents and trying not to have a serious case of FOMO. Some of these challenges over the past four years often had me wonder what my life would be like had I followed through with that BuzzFeed career quiz. Doesn't sound half bad. Maybe I would be Princess Jasmine right now. Nonetheless, no matter what stream of the BSCN program you were in or what challenges you have faced, the drive to complete your degree has paid off. Secondly, this journey has taught us that knowledge comes from various sources, not just from textbooks. For example, though we learned the anatomy of the heart, we still had to learn that patients often have hearts that are broken for a variety of reasons, not all of which can be healed through medicine. Rather, we learned that broken hearts often require us to give of ourselves through professional caring, compassion, and empathy. Though textbooks provided us with nursing theories and models, we still had to learn how to make those come to life in order to benefit our patients. Throughout the BSCN experience, we learned that although grades were important, it's even more important that we'd be the types of registered nurses that we'd want caring for us and our families. As we complete this journey, I'd like to offer words of encouragement by using the three-letter acronym that is a staple to the McMaster nursing curriculum. If you do not know what I am referring to, here are some hints. One, you might as well consider it a crime if you don't cover the key objectives and facilitation agenda for this course. Two, if I had a dime for every time Tanner's model of clinical judgment was mentioned, my student loans would be paid in full. And three, it's not about the correct answer, but which is the most correct? What else could this be but PBL? P is for problem. With every problem that comes our way, there's also an opportunity that awaits. If we look at problems with a different set of lenses and see them as opportunities for personal growth and improvement, our attitudes and the way we tackle situations may be enlightened. Who knows, we may even be surprised at the lessons that we'll learn along the way. B is for based, and a synonym for based is foundation. Our foundation is what keeps us grounded, lifts us up when we're at our lowest, and will always be by our side no matter what. Your foundation may be family, friends, faith, select all that apply. We have been given this amazing opportunity to care for babies, children, and adults in our communities 
often in their most vulnerable states, where we are their foundation. For these things, we may focus on the aspects of life that we are grateful for, rather than dwelling on what we may not have. One success does not equate to a downfall of another, as success may look very different in our own individual journeys. Finally, L is for learning. We have courageously entered a profession where learning never ceases. Speaking of learning, so the NCLEX. This exam applies in the past, present, or future, depending on who you are. What may be important to remember is that this test does not depict your worth, nor does it define who you will be as a future registered nurse. As it is important to continue learning to provide competent care for our patients, it is equally important to continue to learn about ourselves, to strive to do what we are genuinely passionate about, and to be humble enough to lay down our pride in order to learn from our mistakes. Class of 2018, as we are reminded of the foundation that has supported us till this day, let us appreciate that this moment is merely a glimpse of our journey ahead. No matter what adventures we choose to embark on in the future, let us remember that nursing is more than just a degree. It's about the heart. It's the caring, the passion, and the compassion that will give us the drive to provide the best care for those around us. Congratulations on completing the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. I wish you all the absolute best, and here's to a new journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. May I now introduce Dr. Jennifer Mitten from the McMaster Alumni Association, who will deliver the Alumni Association Address. Chancellor Labarge, President Dean, honorees, McMaster Mohawk Conestoga faculty, fellow alumni, guests, and especially members of the McMaster class of 2018. It's an honor to address you today as myself. I'm an alumni of McMaster School of Nursing um, 1999 class. Crossing the stage marks one of the most significant transitions in your life. You are now moving from your career as a student to your career as a professional. We all experience the graduation transition in our own way and no doubt, many more transitions are ahead as you move through the stages of your life. What won't change is that your experience earning your degree will always be part of you and you will always be part of this community. At times, that connection will feel strong. At other times, it will take a back seat to your other priorities. But when you do want to turn that lifelong relationship into an activity, a social media connection, volunteering, or any one of a dozen other kinds of opportunities, McMaster Alumni Association will be there for you. That's our job. You can read about your, your alma mater, your fellow alumni and classmates in MAC, the news magazine for alumni, and that comes either print or digitally, or through our monthly news e letter, Maroon Mail. You can be part of the MAC Alumni Association communities on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And if you really like sharing news and telling your friends about the great things happening at McMaster, join our team of social ambassadors called the Social Marauders, and we'll thank you with some great swag. If you're interested in something less virtual, you can experience activities and opportunities from our MAC 10 program, which is a connected series of events and services, including social activities, career assistance, mentoring, and online and in-person network, uh, networking designed specifically for new grads like you. When you find yourself at other points of transition in your life, you can turn to the Alumni Association for help with health and dental coverage, home insurance, life insurance, credit cards, and travel services, just to give you a few examples. And if, like me, family-focused events are more suited to your life stage, the Alumni Association offers those too. You can even join your fellow alumni at one of the 100 events worldwide annually in places from Hamilton to Halifax to Hong Kong. 
When you leave here today, I know it's likely that nothing I just said will stick with you, and that's okay. But hopefully the email the association has sent you today with a fun choose your own adventure quiz, reflecting on your university years will capture your attention and you'll explore our website, alumni.mcmaster.ca to learn about your new status as alumni and all the things McMaster Alumni Association can offer. And whenever you're ready to connect, we'll be here. So, members of the class of 2018, congratulations on your convocation and welcome to the McMaster Alumni Association. We are very proud to have you join our McMaster alumni family. Well done. Thank you, Jennifer. May I now invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his presidential address. Madam Chancellor, Dr. Favreau, distinguished colleagues from McMaster, Mohawk, and Conestoga, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates in particular. Convocation, one often points out on occasions like this, is a communal event, a calling together of the different members and constituencies of the university family for the purpose of celebrating both individual achievements and our shared vision and mission. In a public institution like McMaster, where the education provided to students is very clearly understood to be both an individual and a social benefit, speakers like myself tend to address themselves to the balance that all of you, our graduates, are expected to strike in the lives you live beyond today's ceremony. In one form or other, the advice you're typically given on occasions like this is the following. Seek personal fulfillment and success, but never forget your obligation to serve the greater good. Now, in such a context, you're unlikely to hear anyone celebrating the virtues of ambition, a human attribute our culture on the whole regards with some suspicion because we associate it with selfish, indeed sometimes anti-social attitudes. We talk, for example, of someone displaying naked ambition, meaning ambition unmediated, uncontrolled, not linked to a purpose beyond itself. Now, this is the kind of ambition Shakespeare was thinking about in his play Macbeth, which many of you will know. I expect many of you also will recall the plot of that tragedy. Uh, Macbeth is a Scottish general whose ambition is kindled by a group of witches who predict he will one day become king of Scotland. He becomes consumed with ambition. He plots to murder the king. And pondering that course of action, utters these famous lines. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. This is an equestrian metaphor. A rider, properly in control of their horse, pricks the side of their animals with their spurs to initiate a jump. And the point of Macbeth's surprisingly candid observation is that there is no particular goal spurring him on, nothing other than what he calls vaulting ambition or the desire simply to jump with no regard for the point of doing it. His is, in other words, <clears throat> selfish or uncontrolled ambition, which he acknowledges gets easily out of control. It o'erleaps itself, as he says, and can end in confusion or disaster, as indeed it did for our unfortunate Scottish pretender who in one film version at least winds up with his head on a spike as a lesson to others. That's why people are wary of making ambition a theme for convocation speeches. At the same time, though, it is important to acknowledge that ambition in some form must play an important role in the work of universities and in the lives of the people who comprise them, whether students, faculty, staff, or alumni. 
For example, you're all here today celebrating your graduation because you've aspired to achieve this. Each of you knows how much real effort and hard work has brought you here. And I hope you are right now experiencing the pleasure of personal ambitions legitimately fulfilled. If you're not sure exactly what comes next, that's fine and understandable, and certainly not any indication that your ambition has overleapt itself. The desire for knowledge, enlightenment, and for the acquisition of skills is always a sufficient spur to action. It is ambition of a very pure and admirable kind. But many of you have greater and more concrete ambitions than this, I know. That is one of the things that make universities such wonderful places to work. While they exist, in a sense, because of ambition, because of our determination to know and to understand our world, they nourish our imaginations and fuel our greater aspirations. And by doing that, they prompt us to identify even more challenging goals for ourselves and, importantly, for our society at large. Universities are places, in other words, in which the innocent and not so innocent ambition of individuals can and should be channeled for the betterment of our society and of our world. In 1918, the British philosopher Bertrand Russell, for whose archives, as some of you may know, McMaster provides a home, was about to be imprisoned for his pacifist activities. Pondering proposed roads to freedom, he wrote this, that while the great majority of men and women in ordinary times pass through life without ever contemplating or criticizing either their own conditions or those of the world at large, a certain percentage, guided by personal ambition, make the effort of thought and will which is necessary to place themselves among the more fortunate members of the community. But very few among these are seriously concerned to secure for all the advantages which they seek for themselves. It is only a few rare and exceptional people who have that kind of love toward mankind at large that makes them unable to endure patiently the general mass of evil and suffering, regardless of any relation it may have to their own lives. All of that is Bertrand Russell. Here, Russell admirably describes the way in which that always slightly ambivalent thing, personal ambition, is transmogrified in some people into an unambiguous good. As some seek, as he puts it, to secure for all the advantages which they seek for themselves, ambition for the self turns into ambition for the good of society. And while one might be tempted to sentimentalize this transformation as a journey from selfishness to altruism, from love of the self to love towards mankind at large, as he puts it, that would be a mistake. Because even social ambition, ambition for the greater good, requires the individual to make an effort of thought and will, of which Macbeth's vaulting ambition is a kind of reductio ad absurdum. All of this is to acknowledge that while our society is nervous about ambition, humanity will go nowhere without it. And we must continually find positive and constructive ways to stimulate it, to articulate it, and to direct it. As graduates of McMaster, you are the beneficiaries of 130 years of positive ambition. What an effort of thought and will went into the opening of the medical school in 1970, the construction of the McMaster nuclear reactor in 1957, the establishment of the McMaster Museum of Art, the invention on our campus of problem-based learning, the founding of numerous world-class McMaster research institutes, not to mention the science and art of discovery as practiced in labs and classrooms across our campus every day. The Bertrand Russell archive, which I mentioned earlier, is also evidence of that ambitious spirit that seems always to have been at work here at McMaster. 
that the papers of this major British figure would end up in Hamilton, Ontario in 1968 must have seemed unimaginable to most people at the time, especially in Britain, except to Dr. Will Reedy, the librarian at McMaster, and my predecessor, Dr. Harry Fogue, both of whom had the highest possible aspirations for McMaster as a center for scholarship and made it their goal to bring the archives here. This year, McMaster has been acknowledged as the most research-intensive university in Canada. For the second year in a row, we are a finalist institution for the Global Teaching Excellence Award offered by Times Higher Education in London. McMaster rose to 66th place in the academic ranking of world universities and was up 35 places at 78th position in the Times Higher Education World Rankings. Given that there are more than 18,000 universities in the world, that means that you are graduating from an institution in the top 1% globally. You could not have made it here without ambition, and McMaster could not have achieved that kind of standing without generations of effort, thought, and will, and a determination to pursue and to achieve the highest goals possible in so many fields. Anyone who has walked across the McMaster campus during the past year will know the goal on which we have most recently focused our ambition, the achievement of a brighter world through education, research, and engagement with our community, whether you define it locally or globally. Now, in many ways, there's nothing new about this as the focus of McMaster's aspirations. Ever since our founding in 1887, the mission of this university has been to serve society by contributing to the advancement and application of cutting-edge science, by deepening our understanding of society and culture, and by fostering and celebrating creativity. Pursuing the highest possible standards in each of those areas is what has brought us to our current standing in Canada and the world. But is the pursuit of excellence in and for itself a sufficient justification for the investment which society makes in institutions like ours? To some extent it is, or must be. But if we go back to that passage from Macbeth, we will remember there are dangers in self-justifying vaulting ambition. What was missing in the case of Macbeth's ambition was a spur to prick the intent, a motive an incentive, a goal. And those brighter world banners everywhere to be seen on our campus are intended to remind us that all the work that goes on in the university, teaching, learning, research, creation, innovation, and the list goes on, is ultimately done in service of a single goal. And that goal is the realization of a world that is healthier, happier, more just and equitable, more peaceful, better informed, better at balancing human needs with those of the planet, and richly creative. A brighter world, in short. The university is in it, as they say, for the long haul, because it is obvious that such a goal will not be easily or quickly achieved. Great scientific discoveries take time, creativity, and patience, as does the work to explore and develop potential applications for such discoveries for positive societal benefit. So brighter world, the pursuit of human and societal health and well-being is a long-term investment. The positive ambition which drives the university is in that sense open-ended. It is an energetic and relentless pursuit of answers to the questions we pose for ourselves and of solutions to the problems that impede human advancement. As graduates of McMaster, you are part of that ambition. Indeed, you are one of the most important ways in which our desire for a brighter world can be realized. Your natural talents and energy, combined with the skills and disciplines acquired during your studies, make you powerful agents for positive change. My hope is that you will use this power, each in your own way, 
and in your individual lives in service to a properly ambitious vision for the world you and your children and your children's children will want to inhabit. And I hope finding the place in that vision for your personal aspirations will bring you great joy and satisfaction. We're immensely proud of you, and good luck. Thank you. Congratulations to the class of 2018. As a fellow alumna, I'm looking forward to seeing where all of you end up. And Dr. Favreau, congratulations on your accomplishments. As Dr. Mitten eloquently said, you're all now graduates and members of a wonderful group of alumni. And I just want to say what a pleasure it is to preside at nursing convocations. It's one of the few convocations where the majority of the class turns up for the graduation. And I think it says an awful lot about the community you've created and the friendships you've made, as I heard through the various pauses, whistles, applause throughout the session. And it always strikes me as just, this is a very cohesive group. And you come here and we celebrate you as a group, but as President Dean said, we also recognize the individual contribution of each of you. And I think it's a wonderful thing you've created. And as someone who attends various alumni events, what I've learned over the years is that the friendships created here at this time are quite often the best ones you ever have in your lifetime. And I ask you to treasure them because they are so important as you go forward. President Dean's given you a lot to think about in terms of where you want to go and what you want to do. And as everyone else, I wish you all the best as you go out into the world. Now, I get to do a few uh, final um, wrap-up items. Um, and really what it is this time is just to say, would you please remain, remain standing at your, at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. And we are now joining in the singing of the national anthem, and after the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. Thank you.